Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the resident redneck. And uh, the other day when we were modifying our chamfering tool, fixture, whatever, uh, I was talking about Chuck said that you need to have some uh, thumb screws to hold it down and I just used some regular old uh, 1024 uh, nuts there. But at one time, if you guys remember, some of you old hands probably, I made a device to make these knobs like this and and like this. This is an internal threaded one, and, you know, so on. And uh, I've used up a lot of them, and I thought, well, why don't I just go ahead and add to the variety? Because I want to make a, I want to make some of these in a different size, and you know, it's got the, the nut inside, and generally spread out a little bit and I want to make some that, that are shaped like this with a you know the thing inside external type <laughs> whatever and uh, so I thought well let's just get on with it and do it so I'll dig around here and find the right pieces of metal and we'll machine a couple of pieces and then we'll find the right plastic and we'll melt it and inject it into the into the mold and come up with some of this stuff. It's the best we got this week. I use uh, this same top, I guess, for a lot of the stuff that I mold. This is part of the mold. I take, put a, the, the screw that's going to be sticking through, I put the mold together like that. And this guy will come down here now what I normally do is I cut half of this off so it's just a flat top and it's not to make it work better I'll do it like one on that and cut anyway it's not to make it get a better grip it's just so that I can get more plastic around the head down into that hole otherwise it doesn't want to flow in there real good and I have different size inserts there depending on what size of uh, bolt uh, or I'm going to use in like that's a quarter 20 and this is a 1024 well I want to put a 1024 in a piece like this but I want to be able to get it out so I'll have to have a thing like this all right now this one when I'm make the uh, triangular jobs you screw the bolt in from the bottom like this And then you put one of these nuts, one of these long nuts, on the top of it. Of course, I, I cut the long nut in half because it's too long like that. And you see, it's going to be sticking out. So, following this same pattern, I'm going to make a piece that will work with this right here. So I can have triangular shaped knobs as well as round ones. Alright, let me get all my stuff together and we'll get started. Alright, what we want to wind up is with is this shape here. With a piece that can shove up through the center. And then we can unscrew the thread. Okay. So, first thing is get this down to size. Which this is a lot bigger than I need. And you get it down to thickness and this is... A little thicker than I need so just a lot of cutting off okay, well that's what it's all about I need some more speed Sometimes you have a need for speed. Good. Much better. We'll kind of true it up. Right now it's not too true. It's not really on the center. Nope. It's quite a ways off center. Alright. I had a different tool in here the other time. It's 
getting closer. I need to make a double boost handle for this part right here. But I haven't. Too lazy. I'm going to cut this down to size and I'll wake you guys up when I get closer to finished. Alright, so I cut the outside to the right size and now it's time to drill a hole in the middle so we can start shaping the, uh, the inner portion. First hole. There's a bunch more holes to go. I'll bring you guys back when I get closer to it. The boss lady just came in here and interrupted my vastly important machining. She had a box, and this box comes from Chuck Bomarito, the outside screwball channel. I already pulled this out when I opened it, but We've got here a, a little white box, and so let's see what's in it. It says A plus countersink drill bits. All right, and that's what's in it: countersink drill bits. He said these were all dull, and so I'm going to try and sharpen them up on the, the little uh, U2 uh, grinder. And see if I can't make something good out of them. But there's a lot more stuff in here than that. Here's a blue container. Carbide tip braised boring bar set. Alright. See if we can open it up here without dropping it. Let's set it down here like this. Guys, that is a serious boring bar set, you know. Look at that. Nobody's used it. Looks like nobody's used the most of them. Yep, they, most of them still got the Cosmonase stuff on them. I'll have to really figure out a way to thank Chuck for this. Alright, let's see what else is in there. Um, aluminium nobody ever has enough aluminium or too much or anything like that brass or bronze I don't know not smart enough to know and another one and more aluminium more of these strips all right and more of these strips now then there's peanuts down in there another nice big chunk of aluminium another strip there's something else I think no no yeah there is That looks like one of Chuck's uh, screwballs. I bet it is. I remember he was making those. They're good for putting in your vise to square things up. It's a whole one jaw and the other, the other side holds the stuff straight against the, the fixed jaw. All right. Thank you, Chuck. That's. That's really something. I, some surprise. I was expecting this, but not all this other pile of goodies. So I'll put that away, and then we'll get back to what we were doing. I'm getting a little smarter. I wrote his name on all that stuff, so I know where it came from.
<laughs> it lasts smart. All right, I've drilled it, and now we're up to the boring part of the uh, video. And we like quite a bit, of course, having it bored to the right size. But we'll get there. We'll have to find out how big that is. There'll be a lot of boring like this. I'll bring you back. Alright, so I've got it down where this little guy fits in the hole. And that's what he's going to have to do. He's going to have to fit in the hole. But to make sure it's that same size hole all the way through, I'll make a couple of spring passes. This guy is to make uh, a little guys with a the nut on the inside of it, no no bolt sticking out. But this needs to go through all the way. So you can see that hole's not big enough for this guy to sink down in it. I'm gonna have to make a hole in this one. It goes down as far as the bottom of this guy in here that'll fit the wide part of this. All right, I've got these two guys that are going to use that hole. This one's a little bit smaller, and he flops in there quick and easy. This one's a little bit bigger. He fits easy enough, too. He had a little burr on his outside that I cleaned off. So that'll be all right. These will go in, of course, like that. What I'm going to do now is finish off the bottom of it. I want you to watch this knurling tool. <coughs> See that roller? Actually, this was made in. He's never heard the word round. He does stuff. I figure we're going to make about a one inch bolt circle. So, let me get around here and find the right one. Where is it? Right here. That's going to be him. And uh, let's see here. Center position, okay, we're in center position. Diameter is 0 0.5. Starting angle, 0. Alright, maybe, maybe that's good. I had a heck of a time finding a good camera position. And I had to go back and recalculated it. I needed a one inch radius and I made it start on 120 degrees and on 360 because it's easier for the redneck lines to do it like that so we'll go and we'll do hole number one it's going to be over here and I'll move it a little slow because I always overrun the number. And I don't want to overrun the number again. So, all right. Okay, that ought to be fairly close. I gotta change the speed. I've got it in low gear. Gotta put it in high. Looks like it's probably deep enough 